How did your crop come out then? Well, we haven't harvested it yet, so we don't know how much uh, what the yield is. What the yield is and stuff, but it it uh, from as far as I can tell, it looks like everybody else's corn. So yeah, it's standing up. It's and standing up, and it's kind of yellow and hard. And I think our problem is figuring out what we want to do with it once we harvest it, because we've been out figuring out where it could go, and none of our options seem particularly attractive. And I'm not terribly impressed. With <laughs> and you shouldn't be. Yeah. Should be impressed at the stupidity. We aren't growing quality. We're growing crap. Poorest quality crap the world's ever seen. We're growing it today. You don't eat the corn that you grow. No. Nope. Not saying that I might not grind up a little bit for some uh, cornmeal, but I basically don't. I don't grow necessarily grow my corn for food. I don't care what's done with it. I'm selling it. It's the bottom line. You don't think we have enough corn? <laughs> We've got lots of corn. How much corn do you eat? The correct answer is a hell of a lot more than you think, and probably a lot more than you should. That's because corn is in almost everything Americans eat, from the food we raise our livestock on to the high fructose corn syrup found in nearly every processed food from soda to spaghetti sauce. This is just some of what college friends Curtis Ellis and Ian Cheney learned when they decided to grow an acre of corn in Iowa, then follow that corn into America's unhealthy food supply, a process you can watch in the 2007 documentary King Corn. So how did we end up eating so much corn? The film traces this back to Earl Butts, the Secretary of Agriculture in 1971, who called for the U.S. to produce as much corn as possible, reversing America's previous policy of limiting corn production to keep prices higher and more small farmers in business. With an overabundance of corn flooding the market, processed food producers began using it in everything in such forms as high fructose corn syrup, cornstarch, dextrose, ascorbic acid, maltose, and xanthan gum. During a visit with Butts, who was 98 at the time, he tells Ellis and Cheney that his policy has gone beyond what he had imagined, but he also points out that Americans spend a smaller percentage of their incomes on food than in any other time in history, which he considers the secret to America's booming economy. But is food really cheaper if it kills you? The rise in the use of high fructose corn syrup, which packs our food and drinks with empty calories, has a direct correlation with the rise of obesity and diabetes in the U.S. In a chance encounter, a New York cab driver tells Allison Cheney that he was able to lose 100 pounds by cutting soda out of his diet, though he was unable to avoid the type 2 diabetes that has killed several members of his family. All this corn isn't any good for the animals we feed it to, either. Cows, who should be grazing on grass and fields, are now fed a primarily corn-based diet on high-density feedlots, which restrict their movement so they get fatter faster. This corn-based diet makes the cows spectacularly unhealthy and would probably kill them if they weren't slaughtered first. Add this to the fact that the cows are stuck sitting in their own crap all day instead of walking around and getting exercise, and it's no wonder that 70% of the antibiotics sold in the U.S. are for livestock, not humans, to combat the illnesses and infections caused by their short, unhealthy lives. In case you're wondering, grass-fed beef has about half the fat of grain-fed beef, as well as more vitamin A, E, and healthy omega-3 fatty acids. But one of Ellis and Cheney's biggest disappointments is the actual business of growing corn. The guys never really get to put their hands in the dirt, using only giant farm equipment to quickly and noisily do all the work. Corn is impossible to make a profit from without massive subsidies from the U.S. government, nearly $50 billion over the past decade. With the government subsidizing the overproduction of corn, the price of corn keeps dropping, meaning farmers need to increase their yield or be forced out by bigger farms. And the only way to increase yield is through the use of toxic fertilizers, pesticides, and weed killers to squeeze more corn from every acre. In fact, the Liberty Link corn Ellis and Cheney grow was not chosen for its taste or nutritional value, but because it's been genetically altered to survive being sprayed by a powerful weed killer. That might be the film's and the corn industry's cruelest irony, that the mountains of corn the U.S. grows every year are largely inedible junk, fit only for animals and to be processed into foods that kill us. So how can we get away from all this corn? If you're lucky, you can find someplace nearby or online that sells grass-fed meat, which I get from my local farmer's market. Yes, it costs a bit more, but the meat is tastier and better for you. It also led me to cut down on my overall meat consumption, which is a healthy move in general and is a lot cheaper than a heart attack. Probably the best way is to cut fast food and processed foods out of your diet, especially sugary drinks. When you eat fast or processed foods, you're essentially letting Burger King or Kraft decide what you're eating, and they only care about maximizing their own profits by using cheap materials like corn, not how healthy you are. We can take back control of our food through sensible farm policy, but the easiest way is to take personal responsibility for what you eat and start cooking your own food with fresh ingredients, because you can always be sure that an apple, a carrot, or a potato won't be secretly stuffed with crappy corn. I'm Jonathan Kim, and this is a Rethink Review.